Before we get started in this video, I just want to, you know, apologize on my latest video. Not that one, but the other one with uh, Pokemon No Fest, where at the end I actually told a lot of people to, you know, F off. I actually deeply apologize because actually recently they act they admitted saying that Niantic screwed up a lot. So that's actually really cool. They did that. So I apologize wholeheartedly and I wish, you know, <laughs> that they don't hate me. All right. And with that, let's go on the video. What is up, my crew? This is Elsie here, and this time in this new video, I've decided to do a little rant slash review of a feature within a game that I've been talking about for quite some time, Pokemon Go. What I want to discuss is something that, if you play the game a lot, or just play it casually, you should know about. Today, I want to discuss Legendary Raids. If you don't know what a raid is, I recommend checking out the link from Niantic themselves explaining what a raid is, because I don't want to waste my time explaining what it is. <laughs> Also on my channel, I also discuss my opinion of raids when they first came out, and my experience in my very first one. Once you're good and have an idea of what raid battles are in Pokemon Go, then let's begin. Legendary raids are probably one of the hardest battles in the game. You see, some raids in the game are possible to solo alone, and even a level 4 raid could be taken down by two people depending on the level of the trainer and the power and CP of the Pokemon. But with a level 5 or legendary raid, you can't do it with only one person, let alone two people. You need a group of at least eight to take it on. The fact that legendary raids are required to have way more than two people is actually a good thing. It's a great way to hang out with friends or to make new ones for even more legendary raids. That's what happened to me just recently. I've been through six legendary raids. Not many because I've been you know, preoccupied with family life, work, all that fun stuff, but I come to a simple conclusion. In general, Legendary Raids Pokemon Go is probably the most fun I've had in the past year playing the game ever. I remember discussing how I got aired out multiple times during my first raid, which is Tyranitar, and having multiple problems because of them. But from then till now, I think they've been fixed. A lot of bug fixes happen. I think they've been fixed because the game works extremely well with Legendary Raids. I think the only hiccup I ever had was probably my first legendary raid. But to be honest, that's to be expected. I mean, this past week, a ton of people came out to battle Lugia and Articuno. There's actually a funny story that happened at my first raid. So it's time for story time with DLC. A group of my friends and some new ones went to a Lugia raid. This is my very first one, mind you. There had to be about 20 to 25 people there. The only people I knew were the people that you know, drove with me to, you know, the site. But I ended up talking to some people because they liked my Bullet Club shirt. Hell, I even too sweeted one with someone. It was actually funny. Anyways, we use the raid pass. We get into a private group. We battle it. And then there's me. I got aired out. So I restart the game. I rejoin. And there's no problem. I just go right into the battle. We beat it. Well, everyone else did. I just joined in a couple seconds before they... Take it, they took it down. I think I rejoined the second they brought it down, but I still got credit just being there. And then the catching part. I made a mention of this in my latest video talking about how insane it was to catch a legendary with Mirror Ball, not to mention you're limited to a very small amount. And I caught mine with a critical catch, which means I caught it after one shake of the Pokeball. I was extremely excited. Though my friends, however, weren't so lucky and a couple of people again a bunch of people in that group were unlucky because they couldn't catch theirs that was actually one problem that many people encountered when trying to catch a legendary and that it's difficult literally that's the only complaint i received honestly but in my opinion i actually find the capture rate of a legendary pokemon fine you see if you played a regular pokemon game or even some side games like mystery dungeon or i don't know pokemon rumble i guess Defeating and or capturing a legendary is not an easy task. In Pokemon Go, it shouldn't be an exception. You can't just make a legendary capture rate the same as a freaking Pagey. You have to give it a little bit of a challenge. Plus, once you capture it and see that Pokeball shake for the third time and click, it's so satisfying to know that you actually did it. However, 
The reason why people are complaining is more geared towards what happened recently with a little event called Pokemon Go Fest, or people in that little area of Chicago. If you watch videos of Pokemon Go YouTubers like Mystic7, Trainer Tips, all that stuff, you notice that when they're catching a legendary, the circle indicating that gets smaller and smaller, it is green, which means that it's not too hard to catch. While people like me who live not in that area has a dark red seal circle, meaning that it's nearly impossible to catch. Okay, now I get that. That's a good point. That's actually kind of, that's definitely not fair. When you battle something that is the strongest Pokemon in the game, with Lugia having a CP of over 42,000 CP as a raid boss, you should expect it to be not easy. Not as easy as catching a 10 CP Pidgey. Or maybe a 55 CP Rattata. That's not a challenge. That's just BS. But besides all that, even if I don't catch a Legendary, I still think the raids are fun overall. Heck, when I went with my group of friends to battle five of the Legendary raids, I only caught two of them with both of them being Lugia. Articuno, I wasn't lucky, but I didn't get mad, because in all honesty, both the times were my fault. The first one, I kept on somehow throwing the ball over the freaking Pokemon. The other one, I was stupid enough to throw the Pokeball, or Premier Ball, while it was attacking. When it's attacking, you can't really make contact with it, and you can't capture it. Both times, I laughed him off, because it wasn't, it wasn't you know, the game's fault. It was, or it was like lagging or I got errored. No, it was my fault. I didn't catch an Articuno that day. But I did something that I would recommend to anyone who is interested in capture, getting more, you know, legendary raids. I was in a few Facebook groups. One for my area, one for my city, and one for my team. I'm Team Instinct, by the way. Thank you very much. Someone offered me to join, also join a Discord group. And I did. I was told that about 10 minutes from my house, there was an Articuno raid. I went to it, expecting no one to be there. There were about 15 people there. I did not know anyone there, but I ended up you know, making small talk and ended up making a few new friends. And I actually beat and caught Lug uh, Lugia, geez, Articuno there too. In fact, I was the one that had to carry the team because during that raid... Everyone died except for me. Thank God for Tanky Blissey. I ended up having 11 Premier Balls because I was the only one who literally survived the whole raid no problem. While well, everyone else got like 8 or 7 of them. I think. Even with a couple of people, with like 15 people, 2 people, that's including me, caught it. So, if you can... I would try and join a Facebook group that's dedicated to Pokemon Go rates within your area, within your city, or your team, any of that stuff that's in your know. I would recommend more in your area, because sometimes when you're in a Facebook group, it's kind of crazy, because I can see posts from people who are telling me, oh, there's a raid, like, I'm two and a half hours away from me. So I would try and get to a local, you know, raid group instead of, like, a group that's not even remotely close to your area. Now, what I would also recommend is a Discord group. The Discord group I'm actually in has something called a bot. Now, this isn't like a spoofing, like hacking thing. This is actually a bot that tells you where in your town or close by towns where a raid is happening. Though the thing is, it might need a little bit of work because it's been telling me a couple times that there's been a raid that started but it's going to end in like five minutes. So, But other than that, I would recommend it wholeheartedly. When I caught both Lugia and Articuno, when I saw that Pokeball click, it sort of reminded me of my old Pokemon days you know, with Gen 1, Gen 2. It brings back the nostalgia and the feeling of, you know, catching that legendary, all right? When you're a kid, you see this intimidating and powerful creature, and it's literally taking down your best Pokemon. Once you catch it, you just get filled with such glee. You can't help but smile. That or scream that you caught it and freak out a couple people. You see, that's why I feel like I kind of still, you know, like I said before, I kind of relate to people who say that, oh, it's, it's unfair in Chicago that people are getting legendaries for, like, nothing. And they're right. Because when you're battling legendary, you're not just battling, you're like, oh, it's a 
Tyranitar. Also, well, say, okay, Tyranitar is actually a bad example. Let's say, oh, it's not your average everyday uh, Pidgey. It's not your average everyday Weedle. This thing, if you do it right, if you, you know, train it right, I mean, <laughs> not do it right, that's kind of wrong, but if you train it right, you have a freaking monster to use against gyms. The one thing I also do like with legendary Pokemon is you can't put them in gyms, like, I feel like that's not too bad, but I feel like if they did that, if the left Pokemon, if you can leave legendaries in gyms, it's going to be very difficult to take down gyms. That's just my opinion, but whatever. Oh no, legendary raids are a great way to go out with friends. Or make new ones. And catch some very cool and powerful Pokemon to use in your team. So whenever you can, go out, have fun to the best of your ability, and get those legendaries. And that's all I gotta say about that. And that's about it for this video. Be sure to like this video if you found any of this interesting. Be sure to comment on your opinion and experience with legendary raids. Or just brag about how many you have. And subscribe for more videos. Also, be sure to like my Facebook page because recently I actually put up a poll discussing what people prefer in a ROM hack. I'll say it here too. What would you prefer in a ROM hack? This is the question. Option A, a ROM hack with about 800 Pokemon with every single form, but it's only one region. Or a ROM hack with a Gen 1 to Gen 3 with all the cross gen evolutions and all the updated abilities, all the updated stuff, make it close to Gen 6, Gen 7 as possible. But you have a second reason to explore. If you could, you know, get to my Facebook page, make your vote, and definitely like, leave a like, because actually it's really cool. All right, so this could also, you know, be beneficial towards the next version of Theta Emerald. You don't know. I have no idea. Possibility? You don't know. I might include, like, every single region. You don't know. I'm just kidding. I can't. You literally can't do that. But <laughs> that's about it. So with that, until next time, my crew, I will see you later.